Before starting, I want to also thank, of course, the community network for the support in the past six months. We started developing actually from March, and their support was, uh, was amazing. So thank you for that. Thank you, Thomas, and the whole team of uh, the Community Network and Chain for Travel. As already shared, indeed, we want to build the new gen OTA. We are the first hotel booking platform we built actually on blockchain. Before I actually share a bit more about us and what we're building, I want to look at this. It's pretty interesting to look into that companies not always like innovation, right? Banks, they don't like Bitcoin. Taxis, they don't like Uber. Hotels, they don't like Airbnb. Bookstores don't like Amazon. Cinemas don't like Netflix, and oil companies like Netflix. So innovation is not always liked, but I think it's very needed. I guess everybody in this room saw this company before. It seems to be a pretty large player in Web2. I'm going to share a bit what actually what I found out when I was making a search by myself. I just want to see okay, how the big players are actually looking into personalization and actually how you do a search there. This is a user case of searching for two adults and a child of three years old. Actually, for the same date as we're in here, I didn't took them, but I was curious, okay, what if I take them actually to this place and what will be the result on the biggest OTA there? They show me this hotel as the first one, the Catalonia Mallorca. Interesting. And I was looking at the photos, like, is it really inviting for me? Is this converting for me? Look at the photos. The first photo on the right top was a balcony with chairs. I, I know my son, he's, he's free, almost four in two days. I'm not sure if it will go okay if you see this, this terrace there. If you see that even the description is somebody who is more into drinks than in, uh, for family. So there was zero personalization and somebody from a completely different country. In my opinion, this can be done so much better. Um, I always understand they're like, taking a lot of information, a lot of data. But if you look at personalization here, it's very minimal. I didn't even see a picture of the room on this one. Because I don't even have no clue what is on the picture. And that's for me surprising that they have no idea what is in the picture. What, if you look further, okay, what actually what I was seeing there. Indeed, there's the visual content. There's just not relevant images. It was not really responding as they know. I was searching with two adults and one kid. This hotel doesn't look anything inviting for a family. The description, look at the description, they're always the same. You can see, see descriptions, like you can read a newspaper in the lobby. If they know me, they probably know I didn't read a paper newspaper for the past 15 years. Irrelevant uh, reviews. If I will see a review in here from a family, or like we had a great time with a family, probably it converts better. Maybe even put a Dutch flag in there. Um, and indeed, the tailored offers. Everybody get the same offers, because they don't know who you are. There's zero personalization. And I think that's why Web3 is a huge, uh, a huge functionality, a huge tool that can be adopted for actually to have personalized offers. So indeed, if you're looking at travelers, I didn't find the right hotel that was actually fitting with my needs. And I think that's pretty bad. And the same thing is the offers, everybody get the same offers. There's zero personalization. They don't know who you are, and it doesn't matter where you book. Even though if you go to large hotel groups, they almost have no idea who you are. I do believe that those things can be solved. They can be solved by using AI and Web3. And I think the combination, I think, is unique. And if you look at the numbers, 80% of the customers, they're more likely to convert, to book, to buy, when it's personalized. And again, I really miss this in the industry, and that's why I'm super excited to launch actually a platform um, which actually covered those two. Go a bit more in detail, if the clicker works. It doesn't work, and it works. Shortly, I will just share what is Web3. And I keep it short because there's much more speaking about Web3. Many of you already know what it is. Just a quick summary. Indeed, the Web1, the first internet, was mainly reading. So you could read the information about whatever. I think the, one of the first pages I visited when I was like 10 years old, maybe it was the White House. You want to see some information? And that was pretty it. Then we moved to an era of the social web, where massive companies were born. They were innovating, actually, compared with Web1 companies. You saw the companies like Facebook, you saw companies like Google accelerating. Why? Because they were innovating. They're using the technology, what was there, what was Web2, what was interacting, actually, with users and with behavior. You can see, as well, that there's a change. There's a change into being decentralized, the Web3. So now it's also reading and owning. So before, any is for posting. So it goes much further. And then you see, indeed, Companies are innovating there. You can see it's all decentralized. 
people talk about AI, they talk about decentralization, about cryptocurrencies, and they examples Ethereum or Camino. Is there something wrong? I think if you look at the user acquisition, I think many of you are in the industry, you have to do to acquire users every day. I think what we can share after the presentation, I think your acquisition costs are going up day by day. Because you can advertise differently, you can see if you're using Google or you're using the, the big social media accounts, they have less information because of privacy regulations. So it's more difficult to target users, the right users, which you need for your company. Much more competitive, of course. So indeed, everybody tried to do this fishing in the same, I'll say fishing in the same lake, as we say in Holland. So it is much more competitive, and user acquisition, acquiring travelers, becomes more tough. Then people say, okay, is Web3 the future? I'm not sure if Web3 is really growth. Is it really the future for internet? Well, pretty interesting. If you're looking at the user growth of the internet, the first internet in 1990, when I started using it, and then you're looking at the purple line, which actually is the users of Web3 or crypto, almost identical. So if you're just considering to build something on blockchain, I recommend just do it and do it quick, because you can innovate now. And of course, I recommend the Camino network there. Um, and it's not that we're the first one who just want to build something on blockchain. There's a few. The major players, and this list is so much longer, companies who are building something on chain. Loaded program of, of Starbucks is on chain, is on the blockchain. If you look at Nike, you can buy virtual sneakers. It sounds funny, but do you realize how much loyalty they're creating within the users? They're letting users of Nike tell them what kind of sneakers they have to produce. So the whole way of the cost of research and everything decreased, and even they're monetizing digital sneakers. Then you can see Porsche, Gucci, amazing brands, they're launching something there. So in the travel industry, you see AT Hot with NFT collection, you see Lufthansa with a collection. So much more companies are innovating into Web3. How I see Web3 actually moving into uh, adoption and the vision of having reservations. You can finally have personalized offers based on historic data. Nobody's using data which is available. If we know you as a user, what kind of reservations you made, what kind of search behavior you have, we can actually adopt this and use this information to give you highly personalized offers. Um, if you look at bookings, it can be done so much easier. If you see a process of a booking, we build with connectivities before, with cancellations, with refunds and everything. Everything is so more processes. With invoicing, it gives you headaches. If things are decentralized, do smart contracts, things can be fully automated, which make your life so much easier, but also much more cost efficient. Indeed, you need smart contracts to execute those things. So smart contracts actually can use this whole automation in the whole industry. So imagine you have indeed a rate on a booking platform, you can adopt, there's a 10% fee for the booking platform as an example, 9% for the hotels, all goes automatically, everybody receives their funds instantly. If there's a cancellation, all done automatically. So things can be done so much easier by using smart contracts. I think the combination is important. So Web3 is a fundament. But I think when you're adding here AI to give an experience, you can even make it much better. This is how AI looks like. I try to keep it simple, but actually always have input. So you have input information and you have output. I think many of you might use ChatGPT as an example. You have a question. There's an answer. There's a lot of information, which is called in the middle the multiple hidden layers, a lot of information what they actually have collected over years and years and keep, keep learning, what they actually use to give you actually an output, to give you the right recommendations. And it, how this can be used actually in the travel industry? You know the search data when somebody is searching. You know what kind of pictures you have. So make sure you identify those pictures. You know what kind of facilities or amenities the property has. You know, reviews, there are thousands of reviews out there about the property, so you know for which one this is more relevant, and there's historic booking data. If you aggregate all this information together, shake it a bit with some hidden layers, and you have output, you have much more relevant data. This was the same search. So what, what could you see from the search that was two adults and one child? You actually know it's a family, right? Or maybe it was a business traveler, actually, who took his family. Could be two reasons. But by machine learning and keep learning from your behavior, you might see that maybe 84% 84, 84 of the users, actually, of the searches was done for a family trip. So you can really change the way you're ordering photos. Same thing is what you can do, identifying what is actually on the photo. 
And that's what I shared before. They have no clue. I think nobody knows what is on the photos. Even a hotel uploading the pictures, they're just uploading, and there's no link between what is on the photo, if it's a hotel, if it's a room, or it's a child's room. Everything is completely not transparent. So with AI, you can actually identify, if, hey, this is a room with a balcony, it has sea view, it has kind of a minimalistic kind of uh, interior, uh, there's a balcony, and you can even identify color palettes, because people have preferences there. Another example, indeed, you can identify as a mountain view. It has two beds, it has a bench, it has a chair, it has a small desk for working on. So you can identify so much more things and information about the room, and then you can actually personalize your offerings to the users. This is a real test as well. So you know that the hotel has all those facilities and amenities. So based on AI, you can also identify for who is it more relevant. Is it more relevant for leisure travelers? Is it more relevant for business travelers? Again, all the information is there, but they don't use it. Reviews, if you look at the reviews which are made, you know for which countries those hotels are more popular. Some Americans like different kind of hotels than Italian or than Germans. They have a different preferences. So you can learn those information. You might see that a specific hotel is more popular for Americans, or maybe it's more popular for couples. So really, with this information, you can identify the user and give them the right recommendations. And I think in the ideal world, now if I'm searching on booking.com, I'm searching for London, you might see 1,200 hotels. How great would it be if you see maybe a few, which actually, this is the one. So you don't spend hours and hours for finding the right property. I mentioned the hidden layers. This is one example, but there will be many, many more. So you have to identify, OK, and this is also what you self sometimes have to make by yourself. So OK, there's a business traveler that has different kind of preferences compared with a family traveler. Where you can see business traveler, Wi-Fi is more important. But actually, security and safety for a family traveler is more important. So everybody has his own needs. And by identifying all those information, you personalize it much better. One more, descri the descriptions, for example, and this is also like a view test we have done. If you look at the description on the left side of booking, everybody sees the same description. But how amazing would it be if you see you could have an unforgettable family getaway with your three-year-old? This is, for me, personalization. You have the information because I just entered the kid of three years old. You can see your child's place si uh, safely, and indeed you can have a great family memory. The same hotel, if it's a business traveler, you could be differently. You can really, if, for example, uh, mention meets productivity. You can be more productive. So this is also converting for a business traveler or find inspiration. So the whole way of indeed engaging with your audience can be done better. And the same hotel, if you go with your, with your wife or partner, it could be made much more interesting. You make it more romantic. You're talking about together. You talk about having great memories about romantic. So again, it's the same hotel, but just a small different description. Make it for me, probably for you as well, make it much more inviting to convert and to book. Again, to summarize, indeed, the AI can make the whole experience much better for you as a user. The content, even the order of photos, if you go, for example, with a, with a family and you see one of the first photos is a happy child playing in the pool, probably more converting than you see a picture of the gym. Right? It's pretty obvious. A lot of things are logical, but it's not used. So indeed, by even ordering photos in different orders, or showing photos indeed which is pretty fitting with yourself, can help a lot as well in conversion. And indeed, to understand your users. Is the business traveler? Is the leisure traveler? What kind of traveler is it? The nice thing is, if you combine those things together, you can become a next-gen OTA. And that's what we want to create with Sleep.io, which is, the first, as I mentioned already before, the first hotel booking platform actually built on blockchain. We went into beta a few days ago, so feel free to test it and use it to give me user feedback. Um, we open actually the platform just to collect feedback. We want to understand the users and always see some behavior there. So for us, it's really important to keep improving the product and product. And the biggest new OTA in Web3 isn't built in one day, but we want to become this one. Again, we want to go into highly personalized offers. I'll show you in a second how it works. Bookings will become NFTs. As you know, the benefit of an NFT could be, could be transferable and could create a secondary market. We already accept over 200 different cryptocurrencies, and we're adding soon Coinbase, Binance Pay, but also uh, Fiat in the future. How does it work? You can see in here how the pose works, including the communal network. So Jane, she connects actually her crypto wallet, such as MetaMask, to us. In the future, we also support social media login, and then we're creating a wallet 
on behalf of you. So also create a Web2 experience. Just also, but this we want to launch in January. Then actually, after she connect her wallet, she actually do a request for a specific city. So for example, searching for Palma de Mallorca. Then her request is certified on the chain. Then her history is visible to everybody who's connected to the platform, to the blockchain, which means any partner, which could be Booking, could be Expedia, could be hotels directly, could be DMCs, could be anyone, could respond on this request automatically and give you a deal for Jane. Jane can make this reservation. In that case, she will get also an NFT for the reservation. So from search till booking, it's on chain. Why? We understand her behavior. We see what she does. We see what kind of historic searches there were. Again, go back to this network. I want to repeat it again. This is something we're actually creating. So we have a test it now. The picture is what you saw by identifying actually rooms, by changing descriptions. We already created this one. And this is something we want to launch actually in the first quarter next year to put all those elements together. Sh short demo how it works. So you connect your wallet. Based on actually by connecting your wallet, we also know your history directly. Could be as well when you have an expensive NFT, when you have a board tape, for example, is that we're applying a discount because you're a holder. So the way we're also growing is partnering a lot with web free communities and other platforms. Could be as well, for example, when an airline actually moving to the blockchain, the ticket is issued on the blockchain, we can base on this one, AirDubum, a specific deal. As you can see, it's a dark mode. 80% of the new generation prefer dark mode. That's why we decided, and yes, it will be light mode available in the future as well, but we've decided to have a dark mode. Again, 80% of the new generation prefers dark mode. A lot of elements are still we are updating in the upcoming period with the AI and everything there. We want to give an easy to use experience. They can pay in 200 cryptocurrencies, they do their checkout, and the reservation is done. Amazing to see the adoption and the response we get from the industry. We start building actually from March only. So in six months, we're creating our beta, which I'm super proud of. And it also resulted actually in some visibility. So actually, we won in June already the Epic Web3 Award for most innovative startup, Web3 startup. And last Friday, you can see me cheering in here. We won Zebo Live in London, where I was pitching in front of VCs. And they're selecting us as the winner again. Also nice that we get a 40k check, but besides this, of course, it's a recognition that you're building something really strong. Um, we already nominated for some other um, upcoming events, so hope we can take a few more awards home in the upcoming months. But we do everything to become indeed a new Jext, new next OTA. Again, I want to repeat this one. Banks, they don't like Bitcoin. Taxis don't like Uber. But let's start the last one. Probably Booking.com, they don't like us, but that's fine. Thank you.